Hello everyone, welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about Medical Breakthroughs of 2022. I think this will be, or is, a annual type of thing. Because I do it on my own, so if I'm going to go look and see what medical innovations came out, breakthroughs, I'm going to do a podcast on it. I think I've done this last year, around the same time. I'm going to try to keep it a, a standard thing. I might do, because I have it written down, and if I have it written down, it means it's true, that um, a scientific breakthrough also. So I do one of each, I think. I will put the links to a couple of the sites I'm going to use in the description. I usually just read word for word and try to give credit. And like most things, you got to take it with a grain of salt. I have confidence that these things are true. But the... Uh, the difficult part could be how soon. And I, I even have a friend who I love, and uh, I'll just shout something out because that's how we roll. And I'm like, we have a we have a wormhole, a uh, stable warp bubble. And then she'll say no, and then she'll just fucking go look and see if it's true or not. And I gotta say, I love that. It keeps you honest, humble. Although, if you really go into our debates, I think the score is like, I have like 29, she has like 7. <clears throat> but, in a general sense, I love looking at these things throughout the year. I'm a science nerd geek, uh, I've said that many times on my podcast, and I want to do this every year. See what's coming up, and then maybe even track how soon they are. Because like I said, a lot of articles, even the real scientific ones, like I'm reading one from... Um, scientific American, you know, uh, you know, supposedly a good uh, site, you know, confident, but it's just the day and age is how we live our lives on the internet. It's going to be clickbait a lot. So something you might see about um, using lab rats to cure certain cancers, well, it might not be until 15 years from now and things like that. So again, this is my uh, science uh, playlist type podcast. I'm going to go through some breakthroughs, medical breakthroughs of 2022. Again, I'll put links in the description for probably like two of them. I have a whole bunch that I was just going through. Um, this is the Scientific American. It's the biggest health and biology breakthroughs of 2022. Uh, the caption is uh, from reviving dead pig organs to measuring viruses and out poop. Here are some of the most intriguing medical advances of the year. Uh, this is by Tanya Lewis. Let's see, I can give credit. I hate when I can't find the name or something. Okay, so it's been a rough year, especially on the health beat. The COVID pandemic continued to bulldoze its way through the population, causing surges in cases and related deaths. Oh, by the way, my interjection here, uh, there might be like scams going on with COVID, but it was real, so there's some fucking nutballs out there, flat earth shit. Anyway, I'll continue. Somewhat forgotten viruses such as Mpox, flu, and RSV reared their head unexpectedly, and the U.S. Supreme Court overturned a nearly 50-year-old right to re reproductive freedom established by Roe vs. Wade. And that's another n nonsense bullshit. I can't wait till these fucking Neanderthal fuckheads are just out of this fucking government in the new age. Because every generation, you know, we start filtering out the fuckheads and they just start to you know, try to put their fucking bullshit on. So anyway, but it all wasn't bad news in 2022. In fact, biology and medicine saw exciting advances across fields and diverse as epidemiology, human evolution, and artificial intelligence. Here are some of the discoveries that gave us hope for humanity and the future of human health. We got updated versions of COVID vaccines. The development of COVID vaccines within the year of the discovery of the SARS COVID, COV2, the coronavirus that causes this disease is undoubtedly one of the greatest medical achievements in recent memory. Two of the most effective vaccines developed using mRNA technology were proved to be significantly protect against we were proved to significantly protect against severe disease and death from SARS COV2. I'm gonna get oh, I could just see it coming now. I'm gonna be murdered in English language soon. But the virus continued to evolve, and newer variants began to find a way around human immune defenses. Fortunately, 
Vaccine manufacturers develop new shots to target both the Omicron variant and the original strain. Early data suggests these bivalent vaccines effectively boost protection against the virus. All the more reason to make sure everyone in your family is up to date with their shots. Now, there could be uh, bullshit with this because you're always going to find people trying to get a scam. Like when they first started doing the uh, how many people died from COVID. Yeah, there were fucking hospitals trying to make uh, money off it and whatever. But that didn't just fucking make it not true. Like there were people. And, oh, they're putting this cause of death. And whatever. Yeah, well, you know, there are going to be fuckheads in every fucking state in this country. And they're all going to try to make, uh, you know, put the numbers on the slips and fudge things to get anything. So, who cares? Bullshit. Next one. Discoveries in human evolution won a Nobel Prize. This year's Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine was awarded to Savante Pabo for his discoveries involving the genetic relationships among our hominem ancestors. Pabo. P-A-A-B-O and his the dots on top. A Swedish geneticist and director of the Department of Evolutionary Genetics at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leipzig, Germany, pioneered methods for reconstructing ancient DNA. He and his colleagues sequenced the genome of Neanderthals and discovered a new hominem species. Denisovians. <laughs> the research led to the Surprising revelation that early humans interbred with these new extinct species. The primeval tryst gave us traits that persist in some people today, including the ability to survive at a high altitude and a vulnerability to infections such as COVID. This is, this is a little blurs, but I guess I get so jazzed up. You watch some of these Mount Everest things, and they got these Sherpas, and there's this big... You know, you make these TV shows and these big, you know, epic journeys of people going up the mountain and stuff. But these people who live there in these Sherpas, they go up like five times a day. And they, like, have the fastest times. And they got to rig everything so wealthy white fucking nutbags can pay, like, $50,000 to go up the side of the mountain. Like, there are benefits that people have from living in certain places and their genes, it's, it's incredible. Uh, the people in the other place, they can hold their breath longer and stuff. Anyway, I'll continue. Scientists revived dead pigs' organs. <laughs> in a feat that sounds like something out of the pages of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, a team of scientists at Yale University developed a perf- perfusion system that restored vitality to pig organs after the animals had died. The system, known as Organ X... Uh, that's a, like a s- X-Men name. Uh, well, it's organ EX. Pumped a mixture of blood and nutrient-rich fluid through each animal's circulatory system. The animals didn't regain consciousness. The technology holds the potential to keep more human organs alive longer for transplants. And that's amazing. Right? Just how, um, how important could that be? And it's also important when you go your driver's license and you know, you mark that thing. Uh, what was it? It wasn't a joke because it's such a serious thing, but it was something I was listening to. And the woman, the young girl, put on her card, uh, you know, she marked the donor or whatever. And she had a personal note that said, take everything. Uh, give as many people a chance to survive. And that's, that's a true hero. That's just uh, you know, much love for people like that. Next, we learned that indoor air quality matters. Before the COVID pandemic, most of us probably didn't give much thought to the air we breathed indoors. Well, I don't know if that's true, but okay. Over the past few years, though, it's become clear that SARS-CoV-2 frequently spreads through airborne droplets, which can build up inside indoor spaces and make us sick. Fortunately, we can reduce that risk by ventilating buildings and filtering the air we breathe. And cleaner indoor air has other benefits. It reduces the risk of respiratory diseases in general. And it may even help us think more clearly. Yeah, fucking, wasn't it like a, a big thing in the people sleeping in those oxygen tanks and stuff? I could see uh, oh, Michael Jackson shit, but... All right. AI solved one of the biggest problems in biology. One of the hardest problems for biologists is predicting the three-dimensional structure of proteins from the amino acid sequence. 
But early this year, an AI program built by the Google-owned company DeepMind called AlphaFold. There's another X-Men name. I've got to write these things down. I gotta, yeah. By the way, when you DM and you GM like I have for 30-something years, you just start fucking picking names and just calling people stuff. So. All right, I'll continue. Uh, it solved the 3D structures of about 200 million proteins. These structures are already enabling scientists to unlock mysteries in biology, and they could help lead to new pharmaceutical drugs and more sustainable crops. Again, these are the things we need. There are people in labs, real good people doing these things, and yes, you can have fuckheads everywhere, but the potential for this is amazing. Um, you know... We sequenced the human DNA things with computers recently, because, you know, if you, to take a human, like, lifetimes to do it, but... And then we start finding things out, and these things are incredible for our future, for the foundation of, you know, what wellness in this country, in the world. Just keep at this, finding these things, coming up with new ways of doing things. We have so much more to do, and for someone like me, maybe little time. So let's get this stuff going. This is amazing. Use AI. I don't care if it turns into fucking Skynet. You know, we'll deal with that when it comes. <laughs> um, so like I said, these were uh, some breakthroughs. There's another one uh, that um, I want to just just go over real quick. And it's, um, let's see, I choose between these. I'll just start going. Uh, 100 years ago, there was no CPR. No chemotherapy and life expectancy in Europe was about half of what it is now, with an average of 40.6 years old. You know, think about that. And this is another thing. I know everybody's in the moment and lives in this place, and even I at times, you know, rail against my, you know, uh, bad luck, chance, just to where I am in the world. And then I try to be humble and just really become introspective about where I am in, in the place in this world. I've discussed this here and now, blurt out, like, you know, I'm grateful to be in uh, America and New York and air conditioning and toilets and showers. Like, so I just think about 100 years ago, life expectancy in Europe was 40.6 years old. That's insane. I'll continue. Medical breakthroughs, breakthroughs that currently save thousands of lives were all made within the last century. Century. Got him fucking really going off today understandably so the prospect of living far into the future through cryonics aka biostasis seemed much further away in the 1900s than it does today in medicine one discovery inspires the next one field inspires another and we at tomorrow bio hope to contribute to this cycle with our own research as medical technology is developing incredibly fast we don't have to look back on an entire century to find fascinating new discoveries. Let's take a look at the eight of the newest medical breakthroughs of 2022. Now, I can tell you why I like this, because sometimes I get, well, I go online, I look for online jobs, and um, in the writing category, I'll take jobs that have article titles and um, doing these type of articles. Well, not medical, you know, mostly gaming and things like that. Or well, it depends on what I can get, because you put in your your work and then they choose. It's a you know tedious thing, but uh, I still want to consider myself a writer. Any case, I like how this is sentence, uh, how this is structured, and it, it inspires me because, it, like, when I'm reading this, this, is another reason why I put this down to something to to do. In medicine, one discovery inspires the next. One field inspires another. That just invokes. Um, you know, that hope and wonder. So one of the groundbreaking new treatments is LDL cholesterol reduction treatment. An excessive amount of LDL cholesterol, bad cholesterol, can cause plaque to build up on the interior walls of blood vessels, causing them to narrow. This can be very dangerous, as it blocks blood flow to and from the heart into vital organs. Inclycerin is a newly developed drug that helps fight high LDL cholesterol. In clinical tests, in glycerin, in conjunction with statins, has shown to lower LDL cholesterol in the body by more than 50%. And there's a little thing here with a little link. The new treatment achieves this by blocking the actions of the so-called P53 
PCSK9 protein. You all know that fucking protein, right? The fucking PCSK9 protein. Which prevents the recycling of LDL receptors in our body. And claristerian is administered by injection into the skin once at the start of your treatment. Again, three months later, and then once every six months from there on out. This makes it not only more effective than any previous method, but also way less of a hassle to deal with. That's fucking awesome. I mean, come on. This is like, what do they tell you about the trouble smell of all eating bad, eating bad food and call it a fucking, you know, this game or this box that we've been set up in. However you want to view your fucking views on things, you know, bad neighborhoods, you know, racial things and you're eating McDonald's and anyway, whatever. So you get it. Could be fucking important. You know, just you know, let's do it. Make me fuck and look at that one shot, then three months. I mean, that's what people want too. They want you know not to be like every you're know, going to dialysis machine. Or I'm not, I think I'm saying that because the next one's gonna be like, yeah, it is. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Uh, type two diabetes drug. Oh God. Terzepatide is a drug that prom pr that promises to combat one of the most common chronic illnesses in the world, type 2 diabetes. This condition develops over time and is most commonly diagnosed in elderly patients. The hormone insulin produced by the pancreas allows blood sugar to be processed by our cells. In people with insulin resistance, the blood sugar cannot be effectively taken in, which prompts the pancreas to produce more insulin. This can be caused by many different outside factors in the form of repeated unhealthy behaviors. Eventually, the amount of insulin needed for glucose regulation cannot be produced anymore, leading to development of type 2 diabetes. The new drug, terzepatide, is a dual glucose dependent insulinotropic polypeptide, GIP, and GLP 1 receptor antagonist, meaning it directly activates the GIP and GLP-1 receptors in the body. These receptors increase insulin production and thereby help reduce excess blood sugar. Additionally, this delays stomach emptying, making it a potentially useful drug against obesity, which often correlates with type 2 diabetes. Awesome. This is, look, I had a friend who's had problems and he passed away who I loved very much and let's you know get a handle on these things this is awesome news and, and it helps obesity and these are how some things happen like the other thing said one breakthrough leads to another leads to, and it just seems like you start looking for things and you're trying to regulate these type of things and you get something that might help for obesity and let's not forget these awesome type things you know that I keep messing up so badly. Let's go. You know, diabetes is a killer. So let's get a handle on it. Uh, it says uh, an estimate of around 10% of the world population suffers from diabetes. That's a lot of people. Three, let's go to postpartum depression treatment. Childbirth is a long-winded and stressful time for any woman. In approximately one out of eight cases, the immense psychological strain doesn't end at the time of birth but continues into something called postpartum depression. This form of depression is usually treated with hormone therapy, but this method can bring a lot of other complications with it. Researchers at Ready, Ready have now compiled a new treatment based on neurosteroids. Instead of disrupting the entire body balance via hormones, this approach only influences the region of your brain that are directly in charge of your well-being. Oh, fucking awesome. Scientists at the Ready Research Group Achieved this via an intravenous infusion treatment with allopregnolone. <laughs> allopregnanolone. Anapregnanolone. Allopregnanolone. A natural type of neurosteroid. It is administered for 60 hours straight, showing very quick effects afterwards, compared to the week long waiting periods of other methods in this field. While some side effects like sedation or sleepiness have been recorded after administration, they were not long-lasting, usually disappearing completely after a few days. This is, you know, future medicine is aiming to make people's lives less stressful. 
Treating the untreatable. Oh my god. Why do I do these fucking podcasts? Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy medication. Hypertrophic hypertro- yeah, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy medication. <laughs> Mavarcamitin has made headlines earlier this year, being the first medication to show positive results in treating hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, HCM. Oh, God, HCM, that's awesome. HCM is a heart disease in which the heart muscles thicken. This puts extra stress on the heart, potentially leading to cardiac arrest down the line. With a mortality rate of below 1% this year, this is not a huge problem in most cases, but in cases where it is, invasive, potentially dangerous measures have to be taken. Mava Campton changes this. The new medication reduces abnormal contractions caused by the generic variants, targeting the underlying conditions directly. Previously, doctors had to treat individual symptoms caused by HCM one by one oftentimes using a multitude of medications like beta blockers, antirhythmic drugs, calcium blockers, calcium channel blockers, and others. With Mavacampton, there is no need for this cocktail of ingredients anymore. If there is no precise treatment, many patients are dependent with a multitude of drugs combining, combating their systems. So that's great. There you go. I mean, HCM, right? Listen. <laughs> Woo! All right. Uh, severe paralysis curing implants. I think I did a podcast on one of these. Paralysis is one of the most restrictive conditions a human can suffer from. Losing the ability to walk, write, or even talk not only impacts your physical, but also your mental state in ways many of us can't even imagine. And I try to imagine because, oh man, it's. My heart goes out for the, uh, those people. Luckily, science is making huge progress in paralysis treatment. Recently, implanted electrodes were able to collect movement signals from the brain and decode them into movement commands. I want to say that again. Recently, implanted electrodes were able to collect movement signals from the brain and decode them into movement commands. These electric impulses act as missing link between the brain and body, effectively restore physical capabilities. In February 2022, implants were placed into the spinal cords of three paralyzed men, all of which had their ability to walk restored just days later. I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> if further development goes well, it has the potential to become so effective that once paralyzed people will be able to return to a completely normal life again. Oh man, I mean, I think I try teared up in one of my fucking fucking wreck. I'm, by the way, I'm a mess, I guess. Anyway, this stuff is fucking amazing. I watched this. Um, they did these studies, and or I'll just describe it because I'm a fucking mush mouth. Um, locked in syndrome, paralyzed people. You know, they they can't do it or whatever. They had a group of them who were musicians. And they got all these musician people together who had this locked-in syndrome, some more degrees than others, I think, if you want to count it that way. And through the AI and the computer and interfaces, they were able to make music in a fucking orchestra. It was like, I don't know how long it was, like a 20-minute thing I watched. I was like crying like a baby. Like, I cannot... Tell you well, I guess that comes from being empathic, and I don't mean empathic like a fucking superpower. I mean, you know, you're, you're empathic, you, 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 you correlate, and you are closely connected to what it feels like to be in someone else's shoes to make it, you know, easier. Whatever you, you can easily feel what they feel that they're going through. Anyway, but this is awesome. Sophia. Paralysis, paralysis, whatever the fuck I'm doing. Curing implants. Holy shit. Boosting medical efficiency. Personalized medicine. In medicine, data is very important, but we always aren't good at understanding and utilizing the data we collect. In theory, the more data you have, the easier it is to correct, to find the correct treatment and cure the underlying condition of your patient. Nevertheless, some common diseases, 
like cancer, are too unique to the patient to be cured with the help of a generalized sample size. No cancer is the same as the next, which makes it so hard to deal with. Personalized medicine refers to treatment of illnesses, not through knowledge of big sample sizes, but through exact analysis of the patient's very own DNA, or data. Fucking DNA. Shit, what man? Recent development of genomics, AI, and a digital twins allow for specific medication and dosages based on your very, your own very data. Like genetics, this approach showcases a paradigm shift in modern science, where through advanced technology, more specialized treatments can be applied. Hmm. Now, I was also reading something that they're close to breaking through the uh, placebo effect. And once that happens with things like this, you'll go to like a doctor who'll do his scan, he'll take your blood, and they'll produce aspirins for you, um, and all different types of things for you. And it's just amazing to think of. Personalized medicine, there you go. 3D printing organs. Organ failure is a big challenge to overcome. Treatment drugs usually allow, usually only prolong, not stop the failure. The best alternative option medicine has come up with are organ and transplants, which are faced with an abundance of problems surrounding the procedure. Organ transportation is usually done by first putting a donor's organ into a static cold storage, SCS, to slow down its metabolism. In case the organ stays in SCS for too long, hypoxia, lack of oxygen, can cause heavy damage to the tissue. Additionally, for each person that needs an organ, it requires another person that doesn't, because not every, not every organ is compatible with every patient. This leads to a lot of shortages and long waiting lists. To make matters even more complicated, organs need to be transplanted quickly, otherwise they lose their functions. 3D printing, specifically bioprinting, tries to step in here and recreate these organs from the ground up. In some cases, like bladders, this has been done successfully in the past. More complicated organs have proven to be bigger challenges to be conquered. But, damn right I want to know about more about bioprinting. And by the way, links, highlighted letters, you know, things like that throughout the articles. Um, CRISPR gene editing technology. Now this has been like such a big thing for, for a while now. Clustered regularly intersected short palindromic repeats, oh god, or for short, CRISPR, is widely considered to be one of the biggest scientific and medical advances of the decade. This genome editing technology cuts DNA sequences at specific genetic locations to alter it by either deleting an old or inserting new sequence. The use cases of this technology are near limitless, as they can change anything from a single base pair of DNA to big pieces of chromosomes. Because DNA is at the base of many defects and diseases, CRISPR could be an easy way to get rid of complex issues. Cancer is one of these diseases that stem from a change in DNA, and researchers now hope to find a new approach to fighting this threat by altering these fraudulent DNA sequences. Other potential candidates for CRISPR treatment include blood disorders, blindness, diabetes, HIV, and many more. If trial data continue to be so positive, the treatment could be approved as soon as 2023. Bottom line, the progress of CRISPR vertex is a landmark that is likely to generate the first approved CRISPR-based medicine, says Fyodor Ernov, PH CRISPR Research. Okay, so it's good that we'll like end with this thing in a sense. I read another thing recently where they are doing human trials and they're on the third person and like they're completely wiping out things. Like and making it so you are no longer afflicted by whatever. And just me not even getting specific again invokes hope and just wonder in me that these things could potentially happen in my lifetime. This is amazing. Fucking science. Go. Just keep fucking doing this. Just to be able to go in. Now, yeah, we're going to get the Star Trek con shit, you know, uh, super babies and stuff. Look, the guy in fucking, I don't know what country it was. He, he, he like ran away 
But he edited like two baby genes before they were born. And it was supposed to whatever. Um, you know, not like be immune to disease. Like, well, we'll see what happens from that. But like I said, there were going to be fuckheads everywhere. There's always going to be people looking to game the system and make things. And there'll be the idiots that try to, you know, corral these little bits of information and make a big thing out of it to whoa, whoa, science bullshit. But it's inevitable. This is, these are facts that are strung, strung together and the data will come out in the end. Again, this says 2023, right? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's, you know, clickbait in its own right. And again, it's the day and age we live in. But this is at the foremost in most people's minds. Like, you go to the doctor, he tells you you're pregnant or whatever's going to happen. And he, he says to you, all right, so we're going to do this procedure. And the kid will never have the flu. I'm, I'm making it up, right? Or, you know, this type of cancer that runs in your family, we've deleted it, so there'll be no chance of that. Of course, you still gotta go through life when you're so outliers to everything, but holy shit. And by the way, the thing I read was an adult being edited. Like, this was trials on humans that are already older, and, like, they're editing their DNA. This is fucking incredible, and I hope the funding, give it, give it them all. And again, this is... One of the things I do talk about is like my wonder of space and stuff. Yeah, we're going to go to Mars and stuff. And I get it, but I do understand the value of someone debating me and going, look, let's put that $8 billion to this, you know, or something. So, you know, I don't know. So let's go to a conclusion that one of this article is saying, every new medical discovery brings us one step closer to the long and healthy life we wish to live. In terms of biostasis, these advancements demonstrate the vast potential of future technological and medical discoveries, including that of revival after cryopreservation. Treatments get more effective against diseases and less disruptive to our body. Previously incurable conditions like paralysis or genetic illnesses are on the brink of becoming curable. We can't tell for sure if it's again, if and when biostasis will grant you a second life in the future. What we can guarantee is that millions of smart people are hard at work on making this future one worth living in. We at Tomorrow Bio believe in humanity's prowess and are very much looking forward to the future ahead of us. Source, Tomorrow Bio, Frank Short. So, I got so many more of these things I could I can go through, but, you know, I, I don't, I guess I can do like two hour fucking shows on this stuff, but this is... Are very important to me in the sense of like if there was no podcast me or doing things like there are a couple of times a year I go to and look for these things. I've talked about my fiance who uh, thirteen out of his seventeen years we were together. She fought cancer, lost the battle in around two thousand seventeen, and I'm still recovering as a human being from it. But you know, mother had mental illnesses and just. Going through life and meeting people, knowing the generic genetic lottery that goes out there, where you were born, who are your parents, or your environment, so much that we need to learn. We're still going over evolution and going through and putting new hominins in, and this is the value of science. It's not that they were wrong, they were right at the time, and they're still looking. Valuing science is always a priority for me. Again, if I wasn't doing this, I would still be looking for these headlines and searching for the scientific breakthroughs and the medical breakthroughs every year. And this should be, you know, an inspiration to people to look and see, well, maybe this is happening. Maybe there's a mom out there who just, you know, recently had certain issues with babies and, well, postpartum depression things. And let's stop policing women's vaginas and fucking biblical fucking dark age nonsense let's throw out that fucking bullshit i still see it i still been able to clean my like my social media my facebook and stuff so i don't get like real fucking idiot and stuff like that but it's still prevalent out there it's in every conversation you have and it underlines things science is the best way we have 
of discovering what reality really is, what we really are, what is actually going to happen, potentially. Whether it be our star exploding, hunger, famine, climate change. We need to address these things. And you have great, beautiful, wonderful, hardworking people at it. And again, you do have fuckheads and you have people taking advantage and gaming the system. This is how the world works. And you might get peer review, um, people trying to get through scam papers. And I'm happy they do that. And I'm happy when it's caught. Because it has to be done in a way. We have to keep everything true as possible. And true as possible might mean we have six classifications for hominid or whatever in our evolution, but we have to update it and realize we were wrong about certain things. Humans talked 500,000 years before we thought they could talk, things like that. And these breakthroughs, they, they lead to other breakthroughs in even other areas, as the articles explained. It opens up things, whether it's CRISPR and AI, very fucking fear-mongering shit about AI taking over and people are like, oh, I'm afraid of it, you know? It's not bullshit. That is clickbait headline bullshit. Yes, we want to be fucking safe and be secure in our knowledge that we're creating fucking advanced, you know, artificial intelligence that's more advanced, but let's not fucking pretend we're fucking facing a fucking real Terror Terminator Skynet shit. And if that day is coming... We'll know when it gets closer. But right now is not the time to fucking put out thousands of headlines. In any case, I love doing these podcasts, the science, the medical breakthroughs, for various reasons, personal and, you know, just curiosity and the nerd in me. And some of the personal things are very personal, and I look for these things to be um, things that help me clear my mind and focus on the future and that there are people out there doing what they can you know i might be a talented driver and maybe could have been fucking you know whatever and i do things and have knowledge of brooklyn and dispatch whatever so you know my talents are there and, and maybe i'm a good writer to an extent but i can't get in a lab and you know i could save my fiance i couldn't go into a lab and Give my mom the medicine she needed, or she wouldn't fucking take the medicine. But this is uh, hope and wonder for everybody around the world. Science and these things that give me such, you know, goosebumps and excitement. They'll be there for everybody eventually. So, let's look forward to more breakthroughs. I'll probably do a scientific one, which probably have the fusion thing in it, which I did a separate podcast on. And I don't know when I edit and upload them, but I hope everybody's doing well. The best to you and yours. Wishing you the best of health. Take care. Bye-bye.